All right. Hello, everyone. Welcome. Super excited to have JT Geisinger here today on my channel. Hey. Um, her new her new book, uh, Liars Like Us, just came out today. Yep. How excited are you, JT? Have you done I'm anything to celebrate? <sighs> Not yet, but I'm going out after this. I told my husband I need a martini because I... <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> been up since four o'clock this morning, and you know you're always just doing all the things on release day. So, uh, wow, yeah, the celebrations will start in a little bit. Right now, I'm I'm still running on adrenaline. I think. <laughs> oh wow! Yeah. Uh, what you're just gonna go out for a drink, and is that it? Drink and dinner, and then come home and take a bath and go to bed. I'm exhausted. <laughs> yeah, I mean, up at four a.m. That's so early. Yeah, it's pretty early. Although I used to be in the flower business in LA. My husband and I owned a flower business before I came, uh, became a writer. And he would have to go down to the flower market at like midnight. And I would get up at three and four o'clock to go into the flower shop. So I'm kind of used to it. So it's not that bad. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, I hope you have um, a great drink. Do you know which number release uh, you're on for Liars Like Us? You have a ton of books. I do. I think this is number 31. Oh, nice. Yeah. So I've, right. got a, I've got a lot of books out there. <laughs> yes. Hello, everyone. Thanks for joining us. Hello. If, if you guys have any questions for JT, feel free to pop them in the comments and we'll get to you. Um, all right. So this is um, Liars Like Us is the start of a brand new series. I freaking love the book. I had oh. the best time <laughs> oh, reading it. You. Yes. I hear that. <laughs> Yes. Um, for anyone who has not gone to it or read it yet, do you want to give a little blurb to say what it's about? Sure. Uh, it's a standalone. It's the first book in a series of three. And um, this one is, well, it's called the Morally Gray series. So that should kind of give you an idea about uh, the people that are in these books, the, her the heroes. Uh, but this one is Marriage of Convenience, Fake Relationship, He's a Billionaire. And uh, she is a bookstore owner who is losing her business. And he comes into the store and makes her a proposition that um, they should get married because he needs to keep his inheritance to get married and she he'll give her money for the bookstore but as you go along of course you know as in all my books things are not always <laughs> as they seem <laughs> so yeah there's a little twist in there but um it's a, it's spicy and um it's funny i thought it was going to be darker than it is it actually it turned out to be a lot of banter and a lot of funny stuff so yeah yeah i almost saw it as like a, a rom-com like a dark rom-com if that makes sense I know it's kind of a weird mix. I like I said at the beginning, I thought it was going to be darker than it ended up being, and I'm like, well, I guess we'll just go with this. So, mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. yeah, Megan said, I'm so excited for a brand new series. Yay! Bookstore owner, yes, the dream job. And there's a lot of cats in the bookstore. It's my dream job too. Cats <laughs> in the bookstore, and you know, she's got like a little a little cafe in there, and yeah, so that would be really fun, wouldn't it? <laughs> yeah, for sure. Yeah. Ordering, excited for this new series, love billionaire tropes. Yes, so do I. So what has you most excited about this book? Is it the marriage of convenience? Is it this specific hero? Like, what are you most looking forward to the readers reading? Um, well, this particular hero, I think, um, he is, you know, he's he's got some bendy ethics. Um and so it makes for an interesting back and forth between he and the heroine. I mean, he takes the trope he falls first to like the extreme when you find out, you know, what he, <laughs> what he's yes. doing. Yes, yeah. absolutely. <laughs> and so I liked pairing him with um, your your average uh, girl. You know, she's, she's um, uh, a business owner and she's got her friends and her own life and everything, but she's, of course, not a billionaire. Um, and so it's fun to play with, you know, when these characters like uh, Callum in the book have unlimited amounts of money, the kind of, you know, nonsense that they can get up to <laughs> with that. Um, yeah. And so that was kind of that was kind of fun for me. And also that that he is a very dirty talker and he has a lot of things mm -hmm. that he says in this book. And it's like, oh, Lord, they just come, came out of his mouth. I'm like, <laughs> oh, okay, I'll just I'll go with it. <laughs> we'll see what they say. Would you consider him like the dirtiest hero, like the best dirty talker? Well, he did a, he did a, like a smidgen of degradation and I wasn't sure um you know how that was going to go over because I'm not really into that. 
but he was, um, <laughs> so I just, I just let him do it. But, um, uh, yeah, I think, I think as I, as I continue on with my writing career, these heroes are progressively dirtier and dirtier. I don't know what that's about, but <laughs> <laughs> you gotta really keep that. topping like each one. Uh, yeah, I don't until know. like you reach that that roof. <laughs> Next, it'll just be a sex club because where can I go from this? You know, <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> yeah. But uh, I don't know if he's the dirtiest, but he's up. So Cage from Ruthless Creatures was pretty dirty too. So yeah, you know, my mafia mm -hmm. guys tend to get they tend to have mouths on them. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, so what was the inspiration behind Liars Like Us and the whole series? Did you come up with the whole like you just wanted to write about? morally great heroes first and then the ideas came after that or what came first you know i'm a very sort of um fly by the seat of my pants writer it's just something will strike me and i'll say "Ooh!" so i this book has a tie-in and i don't want to spoil it for anybody who hasn't read it yet with um with some of my previous series and books but you don't have to read those in order to enjoy this book because there's not anything that will make you confused. But um, I have sort of a big picture about where I'm going with all of my series. They're all eventually going to tie in together and all the characters are going to have kind of a, a big um, ensemble series. So there was some leftover stuff from my last series in the Queens and Monsters um, about a, a mysterious group that I worked into this series. Um, so that's kind of one of the things that I wanted to do with this, um, with this. but I also kind of, this series is going to be very trope driven. So, you know, I knew I wanted it to be billionaire marriage of convenience, um, you know, only one bed, those kind of things. He falls first where you can just mm -hmm. hit all those tropes. So I haven't done that before. So I thought that would be fun. And, and it was because it was a little bit um, easier for me to visualize who was doing what in the book. Cause I don't do outlines or anything like that. I just kind of, like I said, I'm, I'm a panster. So yeah. And then the second and third books are going to be, I think I might have reverse harem in there. I don't know. We'll, <laughs> we'll see. Oh my God. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I am so excited. <laughs> oh my God, I know. We'll see. Are you prepared for that? <laughs> Speaking of dirty, right? Mm, reverse yes. hair, maybe a white shoes. <laughs> that would be fantastic. Oh my gosh, the possibilities. <laughs> right? They're endless. I don't want to make any promises, but yeah, maybe. Yeah. We'll see. Ooh, okay. <laughs> um, Oh, someone said the JTG universe. Yep. That, yes. So are you planning on doing like a avengers type of thing i guess on. you could say it's sort of like that yeah i guess you, i didn't realize i was doing that when i was writing the first few series and then certain characters from other books kept showing up in new books and making cameos and i'm like well wait a minute so you know as i as i've been going along i started saying yeah let's make this a bigger picture um and so i really like expanding that universe so yeah i, I wish i had an easier name to say because we could make it like the the singer verse or what, like if I didn't have Geisinger, that's such a <laughs> mouthful. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the Geisinger verse, but well, I don't know. <laughs> um, another inspiration question from Taylor. What inspired you to become an author? Well, um, I've always been a huge reader from the time I was a kid. I love, I was very bookish when I was growing up. I loved um, to read and uh, I always loved to write. And I had, sort of like a lot of people do. I, I always wanted to write a book. It was kind of one of my bucket list items. So, um, but I didn't do it until I was 40. And, and right around that time, I was really into the Twilight series. And I loved Edward Cullen, totally team Edward. And uh, I, I read a series about Stephanie, or I'm sorry, a, an interview with Stephanie Meyer, um, where she said that she didn't go to college for writing and she didn't have any experience writing. She was a stay at home mom. And then she ended up selling like 150 million copies of this series. And so I thought, well, if she could do it, I can do it. So I, I tried. And that was kind of, you know, two of the things that just made me want to become a writer that my 40th birthday. And then this whole thing with Stephanie Meyer. So, yeah. So you knew from the beginning that you wanted to write romance? I didn't. No, because I wasn't a romance reader. Um, okay. I wanted to write sort of, so my first series was, it, there was romance in it, but it was more, um, it was, you know, shapeshifters and it was like a fantasy series. I kind of wanted to write, I was really into fantasy at that time, um, but it ended up, um, I got an agent and she sold it to Montlake Romance and they're like, okay, we're, it's going to be a romance series because I'd only written one book at that point. And they ended up buying six. So I had to figure out how I was going to expand this whole thing into six books. So, 
So, but I decided that I really liked writing the romance aspect of it and the sex scenes. Um, I like writing those too. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, we like reading them. <laughs> Wait, so what is the what is the shapeshifter romance that you have? Uh, it's called the Night Prowler series, and um, mm. the first book was published in 2012. And it's based on a uh, they're called the Ikati, and they're it kind of ties into Egyptian mythology and the cat worship culture um, that they had in Egypt. And um, yeah, so they're all they're like panther shifters. Um, so. In fact, when I first started writing that and that book came out, my dad at the time, he, he was all excited that I was going to write a series. And I'm like, dad, it's kind of, it's romance. Like, you, you, know, you read. So anyway, you probably like, shouldn't read so it. He did, and he's just like, <laughs> they're having sex in a tree. I'm like, well, <laughs> told you you shouldn't have read it. Yeah. <laughs> you scarred your, your father. My poor dad, I know. <laughs> Would you ever consider going back to writing some more paranormal or fantasy? I would. I wrote a um, I wrote a novella that was a, a vampire novella that I really liked, but it didn't have a happy ending. It was called The Last Vampire, so you can kind of get an idea of what it was about. But it, it, at some point, I think I might write that might be a prequel to a novel about vampires. Um, but there's a lot of really cool fantasy books right now there's like fourth wing you know the dragon yeah. academy there's lots of cool stuff out so if i never say never so if i get inspired i definitely would because i still have um some of those readers from my early series who were like when are you gonna write you know fantasy again so i definitely might ellen said just downloaded it and i'm on chapter eight lots going on loving it loved pen pal by the way oh thank you yeah pen pal was uh pen pal was a huge success for me but but it was one of those books where like a lot of people you either loved it or you did not love it so you know there was like there was it was kind of my most controversial book um but it's it's my best seller so far too so which is kind of interesting to me yeah, that is interesting. Were yeah. you nervous for that release? Um, I wasn't nervous for the release, but afterwards the reactions, I was I was sort of taken aback because some people were like I said, some people were just rabidly in love with it and and I had I got so much fan mail over that, but then I also got, you know, the opposite, which I wasn't prepared for either. I knew the book would do well just because of the pre-sales. Um, but just the emotional, the visceral reaction people had to it. I wasn't prepared for that, but, but like I said, it, it sold really well. So I kind of just have to sit back and let the readers interpret the story, you know, and, and I, I kind of take myself out of it because really, you know, reviews and reader reactions, that's for other readers. It's not, you know, for mm -hmm. me. So I try and be professional about that. That one has a great cover. I will say I was hooked <laughs> through the cover. Yeah, that model, his name is Soj, Soj Mani. And I, I saw that picture before I had even had any idea about what the book was going to be about before I had written the blurb. And I'm like, I need that picture. I have to have that picture. So I called up the, uh, or I emailed the photographer and I'm like, is that available? And he said, yeah. And I said, I want to buy it because I had used the same um, model on another book of mine, book, I guess, three in the Queens and Monsters series. He was uh, he was on that. And so I just happened to be browsing the site one day and saw that. And I'm like, oh, my God, I have to have that. I just had a visceral feeling about this picture is going to sell some books. <laughs> <laughs> yes, for sure. <laughs> oh, it did. Yeah. <laughs> Um, books two and three in the Queens of Monsters are my favorite mafia couples ever. I love it when Mal calls her his little deer rat. Oh, that's right. It's so funny when readers will remember stuff that I have completely forgotten in a book. I, just, <laughs> I move on to the next, you know, thing. And I'm like, oh, yeah, that's true. <laughs> yeah. Do you have a favorite? Like, um, psycho assassin stalker, dude. <laughs> yes. Yes. Um, do you have a favorite, like, sort of nickname that your heroes give your heroines? Because little deer rats, <laughs> pretty unique. Yeah, there, there's, I can't remember the name of the actual animal that he tells her that she looks like. It has like tusks and little horns. <laughs> there is, there is a real animal like that. Um, I try not to repeat the nicknames because it, you, you know, everybody gets called baby or princess or what have yeah. you. But um, yeah, there's, I think in, in Midnight Valentine, the hero called her Sweet Pea and 
that had something to do because you know that book is about reincarnation that had something to do with um, her husband before and so that was kind of a big clue but I don't know I, I'm gonna have to keep coming up with new new things it, but it's just you know as I'm writing it I just make it up so it comes to me mm -hmm. on the <laughs> oh so what is this pen pal news that you mentioned on Facebook I can't talk about it <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I didn't, I didn't put, uh, I purposely didn't put anything. I just said, well, I was going to do a special edition and then, um, those plans have been put on hold, but, uh, but we'll see. It's a secret as of now. <laughs> okay. Yeah. What advice would you give aspiring writers or, or, or artists? Authors? Authors, um, yeah. It's really hard not to be affected by people's input to your art. You really have to learn how to trust yourself, especially when you're starting out. It's, it's difficult because you're looking for um, reassurance and you're looking for feedback. But what you have to learn to do is trust your own voice and write the story that you want to write or make the art that you think is worthwhile and not what you think is going to sell or what have you. Because if you're going to have a career in the arts or in publishing, um, it's kind of, you know, it's kind of hardcore. So you have to really love it. You have to, and if you're going to spend your days alone, like I, you know, I sit in this room and I'm alone all day long, you have to really be in it for the process and for the art and for a love of it and not you know, for what you think you're going to make for money. And then, and then you have to really learn how to trust yourself because it is hard. You're going to get a lot of feedback from a lot of people that you need to just be like, I'm doing my own thing. You got to do your own thing. Cause there's, there's a million people out there who are kind of all doing the same thing. We need artists and writers who are unique and who have unique voices. And that's what makes you interesting. So um, try not to drink too much is another, <laughs> is another <laughs> little tip. Only, only for celebrating a new release. <laughs> yeah. If you're celebrating a new release, it's fine, but don't get into the habit of, you know, cause it's frustrating trying to make art and then you're like, ah, so learn how to exercise instead of <laughs> drinking wine. have some healthy, healthy yeah, habits. get some healthy coping <laughs> mechanisms because yeah. It, yeah, it is art is a tough industry for sure. Ooh, your audiobooks. Yes. I love oh. your audiobooks too. They're yeah. mostly how I read your books. Do you have like, really? like, how involved are you in like the whole audiobook process? Well, I'm very involved. So my first, yeah. uh, my first, I think 15 or 16 books, they were traditionally published and by Montlake Romance. And so I didn't have a choice of narrators or, or anything like that. Once I um, started do indie publishing, um, I started doing uh, my own audiobooks. And as I've gone along, I've, I've learned um, what, how, how do you, make the process more streamlined. And I've, I've got a couple of um, really good audiobook production companies and they'll send me clips of um, actors so that I can listen and I can figure out who would be good for the particular role because um, their voices are so different um, and their performances can either make or break an audiobook. As you know, when you're listening to an audiobook, if the narrator if there's just something strange about the, the the tone or the performance isn't great, you know, you're not going to recommend it. But um, I think my last eight or 10 audiobooks, I, I don't even know how many I've had a couple of the same people. And especially in the Queens and Monsters series that the audiobooks just blew up for that. So it's kind of a fun process to do audiobooks, you know, that from the from the casting to the quality control and putting them out there because it, it brings such a different uh, level of experience to the book when you can hear it, I think. When when one of your characters has an accent, do you try to find someone from that country? That is so hard um, because I, I actually haven't yet, and I have had okay. I've had people say, you know, can you find them? Um, I think actors just like actors who work in, you know, motion pictures and television, um, they can take on a variety of different roles. So far, I've only used uh, voice actors who are able to do different um, accents and things like that. Um, but moving forward, I, I might try, so I'm not sure what kind of accents I'll have in, in the future, but, uh, but yeah, I think it's a good suggestion. Why not? Let's see if they can, you know, get the native speaker to do it. That's a good suggestion. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You've done some, some duet 
um, audiobooks, right? Yes. Ooh, okay. So and, what, what yeah. makes you decide like whether to do a duet or just a dual narration? I'm always going to do duet from now on. At, uh, oh, okay. at the beginning, I, I did uh, a single narrator who would do both male and female voices. Um, and I think, I don't know if I've done dual in any of my indie books, but I like duet the best. And now I'm doing duet multicast. So um, there's, you know, four or five people in these audiobooks, And I find that that's just a really rich experience. So I will always do that from, from now on. Um, a lot of authors don't do it because it's an expensive uh, production. Um, and unless you have a serious audiobook listener base, you might not make your money back. But, um, but I have really um, rabid listeners for my audiobook. So yeah, and they and they've told me that they love to have, you know, all these different characters. So I, I want to continue doing that. Yeah, the ones where you have the, the Irish accents and everything. <laughs> so good. <laughs> Yeah, aren't they good? I know. That's Troy Duran. He's 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 mm. my guy. Yeah. <laughs> so he's going to be in the Liars Like Us um, uh, audiobooks as well. And then I have a couple other uh, people that I'm new people that I'm I'm getting in there too. That were um, Liars Like Us is being um, produced right now. And then I just cast for the next book in the series. I just cast the audiobook cast for that. So that's going to have five narrators. Oh, so the animal from before is the chevrotain. Chevrotain. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I need to look up what that looks like. Oh, it's, really, it's tiny. It's like, it looks like a cross between a mouse and a deer. It's like this big and it has. Oh, little... <laughs> <laughs> <And it's> got... <laughs> it's kind of cute. <laughs> oh, this is an interesting question. I guess since you write dark romance, what are your thoughts on a questionable consent in a romance? Questionable consent. Um, well, when I read books like that, I have to admit that um, that I enjoy it a lot. I mean, I haven't read a book yet where I've been really taken aback or offended by it because I'm I'm very much like, okay, it's fiction. I can just dive in. Um, I think it can be handled well or poorly. And I think that now readers are coming to expect a certain level of, of trigger warnings, which I never used to have on my, my first books, but now people are wanting that more so that they can make an informed decision how much, you know, like dub con or non con is in here because some people love to read it and other people just don't want to come across it. Um, I, I think there's some dubious consent in some of my books, but I don't like to push the envelope too much there because I think it can be super triggering for people. And it's not something that I particularly um, seek out when I'm reading. So I kind of like to write the stuff that, that, you know, I like to read or, or I enjoy um, as far as that goes. So I don't know if that answered your question, but <laughs> there's, there's, there's levels of spice and all that kind of thing for every reader. So. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Uh, well, going back to Liars Like Us, mm. um, is this the first time that you've written this sort of character uh, with Callum being such an obsessive hero? Like, did you just come up with someone who's so over the top? Was this the first time having this sort of hero? I think so. I think um, what usually happens in my books is that the hero becomes obsessed because I never mm -hmm. have heroes who are cheaters or there's other women drama, you know, where he's like interested. I never have any of that. Cause for me, that's an ick. Um, yeah, I always that's like, why, that's why we love you. <laughs> oh, I don't want any of that. Like in real life or in my books, I don't want to deal with it at all. It's one thing if, you know, something causes a little jealousy, but not because there's actually something happening there. Um, and so I think a lot of my, my male characters kind of, either they start out annoyed with the heroine or they start out like interested, but then they become completely obsessed by the end of the yeah. book, which is just my thing. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. so I think Callum just took it to the next level um, where she didn't even know how obsessed he was, but she eventually finds out. So. <laughs> yeah. So like I call this one a, a dark rom-com because the book just <laughs> legitimately was so funny to me. I laughed at so many parts, like the the marriage contract part, um, just Callum's whole reaction to her, oh, yeah. you know, being slow about it. 
Well, you can see him slowly start to unravel. You yeah. know, at the beginning, he's got this very, oh, I'm so cool. You know, and as she's getting under his skin and sort of refusing, because he's used to everybody just falling at his feet and telling him yes and whatever. And she tells him no a hundred times. And he's just basically, by the time they sign the wedding contract, he's like, his head is exploding. So that was yeah. fun to write. <laughs> Yeah, I was gonna ask, like, did you just have a blast writing this book? Were you laughing or like, just I did, I was giggling a lot. I was giggling a lot. And you know, because she has this kind of, you know, all these women friends around her that work, so they could all play off each other the way that, you know, women talk and and all that kind of fun stuff. And she just had a funny internal uh, dialogue. Um, So yeah, I had a lot of fun writing. I had a lot of fun writing it. Do you think uh, we'll see more of that girl friend group? in the future probably <laughs> okay <Yeah. laughs> i don't want to give anything away but you know i like <laughs> to have i like to have people you know drop in and you know do these things instead of just the i think i only did one series where it was complete standalones and that was the slow burn series where it was totally disconnected stories And that didn't feel as satisfying for me to write a story uh, or a series where they're, they're interconnected, where you can see what's maybe what's happening with the last couple from the last book. And, you know, then you star a new couple and then you go to a new couple in the third book. So yeah, they'll they'll probably wander in and out. (laughs) (laughs) Which of your books would you highly recommend the most to your readers? Oh, um, you know, I have a, I have sort of different camps of readers. I have readers that really like the lighter sort of rom com stuff. And then I have the readers who really like the mafia stuff. And then I have the readers who really love when I get super twisty and nothing is as it seems like in Perfect Strangers and Pen Pal. So um, because I don't write just one type of book, you know, there's some authors who you know exactly what you're going to get when you pick up one of their books. And mine, I think people are never exactly sure what they're going to get. Like, is it going to be emotionally devastating or are they going to be okay at the end? Um, (laughs) I would say probably the Queens and Monsters series. It's just, it's got kind of all of it, you know, it's got the sex and and there's lots of funny parts and there's lots of good friendships. Um, and it's not violent, dark mafia, you know, there's like aspects of it, but it's not, it's not too dark. So probably the Queens and Monsters series. I mean, that's, that's been a really big seller for me. So Mm -hmm. I like it. Yes. I highly recommend the audios if you have not. Oh yeah, (laughs) definitely. Definitely the audio. Yeah, I love Spider and Raina. Yes. 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 Mm-hmm. Oh, thank you. Ruthless Creatures. Yeah. yeah. Carnal Urges is probably one of my most popular books and most popular couples. Um, Sloan and Declan. In fact, I think this new book, uh, Liars Like Us, they have a lot of Sloan and Declan vibes um, with the push pull back and forth. And, you know, he's supposed to be all macho and in charge. And she's just like, whatever. She doesn't take any. <laughs> yeah. <ideas."> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that's what I love about like your couple, that that dynamic. Like he thinks it's his way or the highway, and she's like, "No, uh, that's nice, nice try." Yeah. Oh, here's an interesting question: um, If you had to break up any of your couples and write their second chance romance, who would you pick? Break them up. Um, probably, probably one of the really beloved couples, like maybe. Um, Declan and Sloan, um, because they would have to break up for a really good reason, right? It would have to be something cuckoo. So that would be fun to write. Um, and then getting them back together, it might be Declan and Sloan. Yeah. yeah but, like you know, the- uh, I could change my mind. <laughs> <laughs> like in some alternate universe, they ended up yeah. not together. <laughs> or something would happen, but how do you find names for your characters? Is it hard to name anyone? What's hard to keep track is who, what name have I already used? Cause I mean, oh. you know, 31 books and they all, and there's all side characters and everything. So it's like, I don't know. Um, a lot of the time I just fiddle around with the name when I'm starting writing the book, like, okay, I'll start out, you know, with, we'll, we'll just call him Michael and see, does that work for a few chapters? And then I'll be like, eh, and then I'll go onto one of those baby naming sites <laughs> <laughs> and I'll do research on, you know, what's, what's a cool sounding name or a name that I have. 
Yeah. So a lot of time it has to fit the character, like in Perfect Strangers, um, James, I think is sort of a more like a sophisticated name, it's, you know, it's a little bit more old fashioned, but if you are dealing with, you know, Irishmen, then you have to kind of, so, so the character usually lends itself a little bit to the name. Um, but at some point I'll have to make a list of all my couples and all the names that I've used for Emery in Liars Like Us. Um, I had read a book where the the main character's name was something like Elodie or something like that. that I thought, oh, that was so pretty. And so then I, I kind of wanted to use something with an E-L sound to it. So I just looked up and I found Emery, which doesn't have an L in it. <laughs> <laughs> Never mind. Still has the E. <laughs> I started, yeah. <laughs> well, I wanted to ask, if you were Emery, would you have taken that marriage of convenience or run far, far away from Callum? Like that. I, yeah. I, would, I would not have put up half the resistance she put up. I would have been like, right. Oh, sounds, good. sounds good to me. Honestly, like yeah. even if I wasn't in the position that she was, like I didn't have any problems. I still want to take it. It's like right now, if he walks yeah. in, you're like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's like, I'm only sure. giving you a dollar. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> Why do you think like um heroines like Emery, like they have to put up, you know, a little bit of resistance? Is it for for the banter, for the tension? It is. You have to you have to build up to a climax because if she, if he walks in in the first chapter and she was like, sure. And then they, <laughs> yeah. they get married and, you know, you, you, there's really no story there. There has to be conflict. So either it's the internal conflict of the character, which it was with Emery, because you weren't seeing anything um, that Callum was doing. And actually, I have a I was going to write it in dual point of view. And then I'm like, it, it'll give the whole plot away because you'll be you'll be knowing what he's thinking about all this background with her. Um, but I do have a, uh, a deleted chapter that I took out that I'm going to um, put on my website so that people can kind of get just a little glimpse of his obsessive thought process. Mm, <laughs> yeah. <yes>. yeah. <laughs> that is exciting. I'm yeah. excited for that. Yeah. And it's, it's in the, it's, I think it would be chapter seven. So right after the lunch that they have, and then mm -hmm. he goes and he gets her with the police. Um, and then they sit and have a conversation in the car after she gets out of the car then it's a chapter from his point of view. So it's fun. Ooh, okay. Yes. <laughs> Looking fun. forward to that. Good. So what are your favorite traits or aspects of Emery and Callum? Like what are your favorite things about these characters? Well, I love it that, that she can, she can just give him shit. Um, and she's not intimidated by him, which everybody in his universe is very intimidated by him. Not only because he has so much, money and is good looking, but also because he's kind of a, kind of, I don't want to say jerk, but he's just, he's arrogant and overbearing and everybody is very flustered by him. And she only is when he's kind of coming on to her the rest of the time, she's just like, dude, <laughs> go away. <laughs> um, so I really like that they have that push pull. And I like that he has to try and pretend um, because of all of his backstory of what's been going on with him that, you know, this is all very, uh, business like so that was kind of fun to have him do that and you know they're they're both kind of um, smart asses which is uh, one of my favorite things to do with characters is just make them really you know snippy with each other and, and the banter goes back and forth so that's a lot of fun yeah well speaking of banter like what makes you decide especially in all of your recent books uh, what makes you take the more humorous route when it comes to dark romances I wish I had an answer for that. Like I haven't really, well, I guess pen pal was dark. Um, there wasn't a lot of humor. There was a little bit of levity in there, but it wasn't, there wasn't a lot of, um, a lot of that. And same thing with uh, perfect strangers with my series characters. Um, I like funny people and I, and I like um, characters that are funny too. And that snappy dialogue is really a good way to have the reader get to know the characters instead of a lot of internal thoughts. Um, they can, they can watch the interaction and the back and forth. And so they can watch the chemistry. So that's a fun way to bring people into the story. But um, I don't know, maybe one of these days I'll write something that's really just <laughs> dark and depressing but then everyone will be like oh my god what happened to jt <laughs> you know so. must have gone through something to write this <laughs> exactly 
Uh, is there a trope that you consider too taboo in romance? Incest. is oh. it? So the funny thing about that, though, is that when I first started reading romance, when I was really young, there was a series called Flowers in the Attic by V.C. Mm -hmm. Andrews. And it's a, you know, it's a it's a famous series. And I just gobbled it up. And it's about a ballerina and her brothers and sisters and the mother, you know, is cuckoo and there's a crazy family and they get locked in an attic together and they grow close. Um, and I don't think that anybody could write that now a days, you know, I, to me, that's just like, mm, yeah, that, that's where I would probably never go. And um, <laughs> anything that would be with like two underage, you know, so like there's a four mm -hmm. line, right? So 17, 18, that's fine. But like, yeah. Somebody, although, oh my God, I read a book called My Dark Vanessa. Um, and I've he, heard of it. Oh. Yeah. So you think it's a love story, um, but, you know, he's actually, he's actually a predator. Um, and mm -hmm. he, he starts, you know, like, so I think it's, he's like her teacher. And I think it starts when she's like 12 or 13. So there's, there's aspects of things where as a, person you would never condone that in real life obviously and you might feel a little bit squishy about reading about it but sometimes some of these really borderline stories can just pull you in because they're taboo you know what i mean yeah so, yeah <laughs> i hope you're not one of those authors who would alter the book covers into illustration covers i like the people covers <laughs> i do too please stay away from flower covers okay yes. well i have to tell you ellen that i like the people covers too um but there as an author we have to be aware of sales trends in romance right so um there is a trend now for illustrated covers which i have not done i um but with you know kind of that that seems to me a little bit more like rom com -y yeah type of a thing the illustrated but it it's good in a way because it allows you just at a glance to kind of get an idea of what the book, the tone of the book might be like. Um, so with my, with some of my books now and liars like us, I, I did this, I did an alternate um, paperback edition that they call a discreet edition, right? So if you don't want to have the, the studly man chest on your bookcase, you know, for everybody to see as they're walking by, you can have something that just is, has like a flower on it with whatever, and nobody can tell what it is. It's kind of like, you know, when they first invented the Kindle and every bit, all the romance readers were so happy because now you can, nobody knows what you're reading. You know, you're reading Fifty Shades of Grey and it's like, nobody can tell. So that's, that's kind of a trend. So I, I will offer that for readers, but I'll never get rid of, you know, the Manchester stuff because that sells really well and they're hot. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> and you find the, the best cover models too. Love those cover models. That must be such a great job. The cover model <laughs> photographer. Can you imagine? Okay, we have to oil you yes. up now. You know? <laughs> yeah, I've been to one of the photography sessions for you the have? cover. Yeah, yeah. Was it it fun? Was, oh, I want to hear about was. that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so it was just um it was for a romantic suspense book. So okay. he was wearing this dirty tank top and they had to like spritz him with water to make him, you know, a little shiny, a little sweaty. <laughs> it was was it, was it a couple fun. or was it just the guy? Um, it was just the guy. Okay. Okay. Good. Yeah. Wow. But yeah, that was my one and only time. At Did you ask to hold the spritz bottle? <laughs> no. <laughs> like, no. How did I, was, <laughs> I was just the intern. I was okay. There. Okay. <laughs> I mean, I wish, but yeah. no, that was fun. I bet. <laughs> Ooh, any chance of writing about the kids of Queens and Monsters series as a second generation? Yeah, that's that's um, an idea that I have bantered around because I think they all were either pregnant or having kids at the end of each at the end of the series. If I'm not mistaken, my problem is I once I'm done with something, I'm like this in my life too. It's like it's in the rearview mirror. I'm I'm done. I'm on to the next projects, and so like half the time I forget what I even wrote in the book. Um, because I'm onto new projects, but because of the Queens and Monsters series is such a beloved series with my readers, I, and I know that they would want more of that. There definitely is, and I think now that I'm, I'm, you know, moving into possibly what's happening with the Thirteen and things like that. All of that can can come into this big universe that I'm creating. So the short answer is, we'll see. <laughs>
<laughs> maybe. <laughs> yeah, maybe. I don't like to plan yeah. too far in advance because I lose, you know, for me, it has to be exciting. And if I plan too far in advance, I get bored. <laughs> I do. But yes, this comment, Studley Manchester covers are here to stay. They are. <laughs> I will always offer that for your viewing pleasure. Never fear. <laughs> <laughs> And then Flowers in the Attic is one of my favorite movies. What is yours? One of my favorite movies? Oh, I have a couple. Um, the Princess Bride, Pride and Prejudice, the Kira Knightley version. Mm -hmm. I love that movie. So like anytime my husband goes out of town or he's not here, I'll just put that on because I love that. Um, probably, those two are probably, probably my, some of my top two. I'm sure I could think of others, but I need that martini to get my brain going. <laughs> <laughs> I love that you write books with mature couples. Would you ever write something with maybe a woman that has a romance in the second half of her life? Yes. And that is going to be in this series, in the Morally Gray oh. series. There's going to be an older woman, younger man. Um, and I don't know what you mean by second half of her life, but um, it definitely, because I think we're, you know, I'm over 50 and women now are just so vibrant. And in the second half of your life, it's like, now you're almost just getting started. And I think as romance readers, we're kind of into that now. We want to read about older couples. And so, yeah, yeah, I definitely will. Ooh, I'm excited for the older woman and her man. Because I do like that, that age gap. I know it's not as popular as the older man. The other yeah. woman trope. But. I have plenty of those, so you know. Mm -hmm. Nice to write something different. <laughs> yeah. Ooh, yes. <laughs> the <Aww>. female <laughs> main characters are so sassy. I agree. They are sassy. Yeah. I like I like a mouthy woman. I don't like timid wallflower characters. Uh, so there you go. <laughs> is this is this gonna be the second book or the third I'm book? I'm not gonna say. <laughs> Okay. Can you say how many books we're getting in the series? So far I have three planned, but, okay. but, but, but I have a possibility of a fourth one because if there's a little thing percolating in the back of my mind, this little storyline that um, is kind of like a secret that may come out. And so if so, then there'll be four. And sometimes, you know, if people, if there's a huge reader response to the series, like there was with Queens and Monsters, everyone demanded Spider get his own book. So Spider had to have his own book. So I'm like, okay, so we'll see where that goes, but at least three for this series. Can you share like what the, the morally gray aspect of it is? Of, <laughs> nope. <laughs> <laughs> keeping, well, keeping just like I couldn't in the first one because then you know it's yeah, sort of, it's a true. spoiler so but they're all morally gray where like in real life if this person really did all these things you'd be going mm. jail <laughs> problem <laughs> yeah stalker jail yeah but yeah it's, it's fiction so we can get away with it <laughs> yes uh what trope would you write about that you haven't yet um, well, that reverse age gap we were just talking about, uh, definitely want to write about that. Um, I do think I want to write a why choose romance where there's one main female character and at least two, possibly three male suitors. I think if you get more than three, then it gets, you know, it's very confusing. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so like where... Yeah, like okay <laughs> i'll just stand back here and you guys do your thing um yeah reverse reverse harem and uh why choose and then the age gap i you know i have a hard time sometimes remembering all the tropes because there's so many so mm -hmm. i don't know what are your guys's favorite tropes that you want me to write let me know i'll work yeah. it out <laughs> yeah well the why choose is going to be interesting because you do write you know possessive heroes so it'll be interesting yes. to see them sharing well, I think what would probably have to happen is that the male character um, is maybe bi. And so he's in love with both of them. So, you know, because I do mm -hmm. like to have that. I don't, I don't like to write stories where it's just about the sex. I like it to where there's a real emotional connection and they're really in love with each other. They get there eventually, not where it's just, you know, lighthearted and light dating or anything like that. Like, no, they have to be obsessed with each other. So. Or he has to be obsessed with her is more important. <laughs> yeah. Yes. 
to a yes please to the fourth book, fourth book. Yeah. okay all right more <laughs> than listening. three more than three guys and you basically have a sports team right you do although that could be fun oh sports team a whole sports team for a why <laughs> choose book this girl is going to need to be drinking a lot of water and doing a lot of <laughs> you know, limber exercises. She's going to have to be in really good shape. <laughs> Ooh, oh. Do you have any celebrities in mind who you think would be perfect to play your characters in your book? I don't because I don't um, I don't look at inspiration photos for for characters. I know a lot of authors do that and a lot of um, readers like to like to figure out, okay, who is, you know, which guy I, I right now I'm sort of obsessed with Pedro Pascal. Um, yeah, I, I just, there's something about him that I love. Yeah, um, everyone is loving him. Um, they yeah, should. He's got a good sense of humor, but he's also got yeah. that daddy energy. I don't know. I, I, I'm really liking him. Um, but yeah, I don't, I really don't know. I'm, I, you, you guys would have to tell me cause I'm not good there. I'm sorry. <laughs> Ooh, okay so the tropes that they want you oh, to write trouble. Ooh, i haven't done that yet no mm. that would be great yeah mm. the angst mm -hmm. mm. okay i'm getting ideas here because i do when i go angsty i go really angsty so okay and then single dad a dark single dad romance single dad mm. why not yeah Sure. Yeah. <laughs> Where's my pen and paper? I see right. <laughs> maybe maybe a single dad assassin, you know. Okay. <laughs> Goes out yeah, I think if I did then... a single dad, I don't think I just thinking about it right off the top of my head, I don't think it would be lighter. I think it would be dark. Like this guy has some baggage, right? So yeah. yeah. Okay. I like it. Yes. Reverse hero, romantic suspense. Okay, I can probably work those two together in one book. <laughs> how much time does it take to write a manuscript and how much time it goes into editing do publishers change a lot once you hand the book over well the process is extremely different from traditional publishing which is where i came from montlake romance to indie publishing um, because traditional publishing takes a lot longer. It can take years from the time you start writing the book to the time that the book comes out because there's many, many layers of in-house processes. So for example, when I usually it takes me about three months to write a manuscript. Um, if I'm with a publisher, I turn it in and then that might get published in a year and a half because it'll go through developmental editing first where a developmental editor will take a look at the manuscript just from a, a, a big picture point of view and look to see if there's any areas that feel underdeveloped, if there's some characters that need to be fleshed out, if there's something that isn't working and then they'll give it back to you. And then you can go back and forth for a few months on that aspect of the story. And then once that is down, um, then it goes to the editing where that's a few months of, you know, looking at the sentence structure and all of those kind of things. And then you have a final proofread where they're just looking at is, you know, are, is there any spaces that are, that are out and all that stuff. So that takes a long time. Um, but when I'm doing an indie book, um, basically I just, I write the book and I send it to my editor and the proofreader and that can get turned around in a month and then I can publish it. So, um, there's, there's good and bad aspects to both. And one isn't necessarily better than the other. I just happen to like being in control of my process, my covers, um, when I can publish and, and things like that. So I've really enjoyed going into the indie aspect of publishing. Would you write a character with a disability? Similar sure. Yeah, sure. One. In fact, I um, I was just reading an article the other day, uh, I think it was in the New York Times, about a woman who was in a wheelchair and she, was, she wrote this beautiful article about um, dating, trying to date. And the uh, the stigma that people or, or that, you know, that she, the, the challenges that she had with people assuming that she wasn't able to do all sorts of things because of her wheelchair. And I thought that the, um, the story was really kind of moving. And I thought, so yeah, I think whatever the disability is, I think it would be interesting to show 
someone because that's a lot of character development there you know and and there are a lot of people in this world who even if you can't tell just by looking with them at them we all have certain challenges i have ulcerative colitis which is a you know a disabling disease you can't tell it by looking at me but um but i think it would be fun to well not fun but maybe even meaningful to write something with a heroine or a hero who has those kind of challenges because a lot of people would identify with it i think we don't just always want to hear about the perfect people right yeah yeah um oh another another sort of suggestion mafia right hand is a woman oh a woman empowered my brother yeah, yeah. Well, I guess I wonder if this person read um, Raina's story um, in Brutal Vows. But yes, I because she takes over the entire Italian mafia. But yeah, um, yeah. but it's it's nice to have. Well, and, and it also in my um, my Night Prowler series, that was all you know run by women. That whole hierarchy was all you know women based. So it's good to have girl power. <laughs> And then I also love a mafia world where the main characters are enemies of the main leads from Queens and Monsters series. Oh, that'd be interesting. You guys are giving me very good ideas. I like that too. Yeah. <laughs> you have lots of, lots of books to write now. No, it's, it's a good one. Yeah. As I'm yeah. having my martini later, I'm just going to write it all down on a cocktail napkin. And we'll get <laughs> <on it. laughs> yeah. Just make sure you don't forget. <laughs> Recap. Ooh, any any international book signings or just book signings in general coming up? I keep getting invited to um, the rare signings and they're all over the place, you know, Paris, London, Edinburgh, what have you. And um, I just haven't um, committed to that because I haven't been sure, you know, what my schedule is going to be um, for international kind of travel. But uh, I'm going to Love in Vegas in October of this year. That's Ooh, yeah. Las Vegas. I will see you there. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. That's going to be my first signing in, I don't know, six or eight years or something. Cause I, I used to do them with Romance Writers of America, but I haven't in so long. And then um, in Denver uh, next, I think it's April. I think it's April. Um, I'll be in Denver for um, Readers Take Denver. So though I have those two coming up, but international, I don't have any plans as of yet, but never say never. Do you have a pre-order for Love in Vegas? I don't have that up yet. And somebody needs to help me. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how to do that. So that's, that's on my list. Um, that will probably be up within the next week or two on my website. So, so we'll get that doing. So if you had to choose, who is your favorite hero that you written so far oh my favorite hero um i don't know if you read melt for you but um cameron mcgregor yeah. is one of my favorites uh, because he is so much more than people think he is and he's so supportive of Joellen and um, he's very patient with her. And he's basically a really good friend to start out with. And he's funny and he's hot. So Cam is one of my favorites. And also, you know, Declan. Um, Declan's one of my, <laughs> he's one of my favorites too. So, but also um, from Pen Pal, Aiden. Uh, there was just something about him that just sticks with me, you know, the way that uh, that he fell for her. And, and uh, so maybe those three are probably my top three. Yeah. Yeah. The Slow Burn series is actually, I think, the first like books that I ever read from you. That was how oh. I discovered you. OK. <laughs> I always like to find out how people came into the the universe. Yeah. Like the the third one is my favorite, surprisingly, is very different from the first two but it totally was it. And you know what's funny yeah. that's my least favorite book that I've written <laughs> really yes. why? I don't know why and in fact when my husband when I went to turn that manuscript into the publisher my husband and I were in an argument and and I didn't dedicate the book to him that's the only book that is not dedicated to him because I was like in a snit wow. I, just, <laughs> I know so that book is sort of infamous in my household it's like don't mention it for you <laughs> <laughs> wow yeah so but, but I, I loved, I you loved it. 
<laughs> yeah, I love the humor. Like, yeah. I think that was what solidified you, like, being able to write such good banter. Oh, funny. I think, yeah, that was funny. I'll have to go back and reread it and see if I can adjust my opinion. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yes. Would you ever write an interracial dark romance? Sure. Now, I like to always find out what people mean by, like, dark romance. Do we, are we talking, is is there violence in it? Or, like, so, for instance, I just read, um two of H.D. Carlton's books, which I consider dark romance. So I, I read the Hunted the Haunted and, Madeline, right? The Cat and Mouse Duet. Cat and Mouse Duet. And then I read um, Does It Hurt? And both of those to me are dark. And there's a lot of stuff that I know some people were like, you know, so does that what you mean by dark or do you just mean, I don't know. But the Maybe answer is- Your, your yeah. style. My style. Your style of dark romance. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. I usually just go by what, uh, what, what hits me in the moment, uh, you know, kind of what, what, uh, what my muse says to do. And then I'll, I'll write it because for me, I, to be able to, to get through a book, you know, to write three months, there really needs to be something that's, that's drawing me through it. And I think that was one of the things that I didn't like about ache for you. I had written a whole outline for that book. And by the time I got to it, I'm just like, I knew what was going to happen, which to me, I don't want to know what's going to happen. So, you know, and that was the last time I ever plotted anything. So, <laughs> yeah. If you could co-write with another author, who would it be? I don't think I would ever co-write. I'm, mm -hmm. yeah, I don't think I would ever do that um, because I'm probably too much of a, uh, I'm very, I'm very independent. <laughs> so I don't know. I don't know about the collaboration process. I don't know how that would work. Um, so I just can't imagine that I would ever do it. I don't know. I but like, like in the ideal scenario, you know, if they're maybe like a favorite author. Um, yeah, but my favorite authors don't write what I write. So mm -hmm. like I'm, I, I revere um, what's his face. <laughs> The book is right there, The Road, Cormac McCarthy. So, you know, he writes very oh. dark, like, oh, you know, I don't know, where everybody's dead at the end and it's super bleak and the language is amazing. So I like really literary authors uh, and books, um, but I don't write that. So I don't, you know, for me to collaborate with somebody, they wouldn't want to... <laughs> They wouldn't want to collaborate yeah. with me. <laughs> They'd be like, wait, why is his, <laughs> what's going <laughs> where, you know? <laughs> why is he naked again? <laughs> yeah. Oh. Ooh, which one of your books would you want to turn into a movie? I want them all to be movies immediately. <laughs> that would be my, that would be my, my thing. Um, the thing about turning uh, books into movies is, you know, nobody ever likes the movie as much, but um, um, I think Midnight Valentine would make a really good uh, movie because I would say like Perfect Strangers or Pen Pal, but those are such whiplash inducing things that I don't know how it would, if the, the experience of reading it would come across to the screen, maybe. Um, yeah, maybe Midnight Valentine. I don't know. You guys are asking these very good questions. So, you know, I'm, I'm not sure. So what are you currently working on right now? Are you writing book two in the Morley Gray series or is that done? Yeah, three. Wow. <laughs> so what happens is I have to kind of sometimes, you know, based on what happens, because two hasn't come out yet. So based on what happens in three, I might have to go sort of change things around a little bit. So, yeah. So then we'll see what's going to happen if there's going to be a fourth. Is there anything you can tease about what we're getting mm -mm. next? <laughs> You're going to get more of kind of the same style. Um, I, it might go darker as the series goes on because more things are going to sort of come to light in the background. Um, and so Cole is the main character of book two. Um, and Cole... Oh, the brother? The brother who is very unhappy and always looks like he's about to blow a gasket. He's the hero in uh, in book two. So, um, is yeah. it going to be all three heroes, or 
Um, or, yeah, it's going to be all brothers, three brothers. I mean, it's going to be all okay. three brothers. Yeah, and okay. possibly somebody else who is a secret that we don't know about that will pop up. <laughs> but yeah, interesting. It's all three McCord brothers. Mm-hmm. Ooh, okay. Because they're, that's you know, awesome. they have this media empire that's involved in interesting. Yeah. Things. So yeah, I'm using that as a backdrop. We only met one of the brothers, though, right? We didn't meet the. the you didn't meet one? Carter yet, so it's okay. it's Callum, Cole, and Carter. Mm-hmm. You haven't met Carter. He's the youngest. And Cole is the middle brother who has all the uh, <laughs> attitude problems. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so I'm guessing the youngest one is going to be the older woman, younger man, possibly. <laughs> <laughs> That's my I'm not telling you anything face. I might have looked like I was having a problem there, but <laughs> I, that's me going. I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> I don't want to ruin it. Yeah. Are any of your books available in other languages? Yes, my books have been translated into more than 20 languages. So depending upon which <laughs> which book, you know, yeah, they are. If you had to do a retelling for a future book, what fairy tale or myth would you lean towards? Oh, fairy tale. Uh, you know, I really like, I don't know about fairy tales, but I really like the Greek gods because there's so much history there and it's all pretty much, it's all very dark, like Hades and Persephone and and those kinds of things are all, they can be really dark. I did a um, Beauty and the Beast retelling with, uh, with Burn For You. Um, God, there's, there's so many good ones. Oh, and then the Ugly Duckling I did with um, Melt For You. And then I can't remember what the third one was. Cinderella, maybe. Cinderella. Cinderella. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I've so I've done a couple of that. So it would probably be something, something uh, dark to do with some of the Greek myths that I would that I would go with because there's a lot of interesting underworld aspects and stuff to the Greek mythology. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you could definitely fit Greek mythology into a sort of dark mafia romance Mm -hmm. kind of twist. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe do an alternate universe kind of a thing. Yes. (laughs) Yeah, that is interesting how you brought up, like, since these books haven't come out yet, you might have to change some things. Would you ever, like, say what you end up changing? Yeah, after the fact. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's one of those things that readers kind of enjoy looking at behind the scenes uh, of processes. So, yeah, after the fact, just like I'm going to give Callum's, uh, chapter, you know, after the fact, after this book has come out and everybody's read it, you know, then I can give his chapter so you can sort of see a glimpse into what makes him tick. But I need mm-hmm. to get better about keeping notes about all these things as I go along um, so that I can maybe do something interesting for you guys where you can see all of these different, you know, plot points and what have you and how they they move around. Um, but yeah. Oh, another book signing question. You're going to too. I'm going to do, yeah, I'll be in Las Vegas in October and then I'll be in Denver in uh, April of 24. Yeah. What are some of your favorite dark romances by other authors? Uh, Kitty Thomas has a book that has stuck with me for years since I first read it. It's called Comfort Food. Um, it's about a woman who is abducted and it's not a fun abduction like you know, Declan and Sloan in uh, Carnal Urges. She's truly abducted. Um, and it's so good. I, I'm getting chills just talking about it. Okay, so comfort food is really good. Um, I really loved a book called The Idea of You by Robin Lee. It's a beautiful romance about an older woman and a younger man, and it does not technically have a happily ever after, but it's one of the best written romances I've ever read. Um, And dark romances, well, I I did really enjoy um, Does It Hurt by H.D. Carlton. I thought that was just interesting. And and I like when authors will just go there and they don't give a shit. They're like, I'm just gonna do something really unusual because you kind of get bored of reading the same old thing. So I like yeah. it when people take risks and she definitely take risks, which I respect um, as a writer. So like, even if you don't like the book or it's not for you, it's like, all right, well, she did a thing that people are talking about. And I like that. Um, I really liked Verity by Colleen Hoover. 
because it was very different from her normal stuff, I think. And she took a risk there too. And at the end I was like, Oh, you did not. Yeah. So <laughs> yeah. So I thought that was interesting. Um, I think I've only read like one other book of her. So, but I know that that's not normally her, her style. So yeah, no. just for a couple. Yeah. How do you get out of a writing slump? Um, usually it's very predictable for me. Normally the first half of the book, I'm charging through it and everything is going great. The first, the first 25% is a little bit more difficult because I'm getting to know the characters and I don't plot anything. So I just let the characters, uh, personalities unfold and they create whatever, you know, tension or, or plot points are going to happen. Um, by the time I reach 50% of the book, I've got all this stuff and now I have to start leading towards a climax. And usually it'll be like, okay, am I going to go here or am I going to go here? So what I try to do is not freak out about it and just write a few pages or a chapter and see if it feels right. And if it doesn't feel right, then I just put that aside. I have a big deleted, um, deleted ideas file for every book that I write. And it's probably like 10,000 words, which just maybe ends up being like four or five chapters worth of stuff. So, you know, I just allow myself to go off in different directions and see if it feels right. And if it feels right, then I go with that. And usually something will occur to me that'll be like, oh, good. And then it'll take me all the way through to the end of the book. But the one thing you have to do if you're in a writing slump is not freak yourself out about it. Just start writing something else. Just start, you know, playing around with it. Um, usually if I get to a writing slump, it's because I don't know what's going to happen next. And usually that's because I, there's some question about the character or their background or the motivation that I haven't answered correctly. So I really have to start, sometimes I'll, you know, I'll write little things to the character, like, you know, getting to know the character and, well, what, well, you know, what is, what is all this? What was his mother like? What was, you know, so you, not that you're ever going to use it in the book, but it kind of just gives you ideas and then you can run with it. But I've learned now after 31 novels not to stress out because it always gets done, but there's always a part in the middle. Well, I'm like, okay. So I just, you know, have a martini <laughs> or a glass of wine and I try yeah. not to stress out about it. Cause the more you stress out about it, the more you, it's like a muscle gets cramped and you, so you just breathe through it. All right. Well, it's already been an hour. So oh, really? I think, okay. yeah, we can wrap this up. I'll let you get to your martini. Hello. <laughs> yes. Sorry. Well, thank you so much, JT, for coming on and chatting about all your Thank books. you for having me. This was a blast. Really. Yes. Fun. And thank you everyone for joining us. All your thank great you questions. <laughs> um, so Liars Like Us is out today. Go grab it if you haven't already started it. Um, do you have a release date for book two? Yes, September 28th. So four months. Ooh, okay. So we, yes. not, not too long. Yeah. So we'll mm -hmm. keep them snappy. Yeah. And they're uh, both available in uh, Kindle Unlimited too. So is there anything else you wanted to share before we um, end this? Uh, a lot of people ask when the audio will be coming out for Liars Like Us and it's being recorded now. So that'll come out at the end of July or early August. So you can look forward to that. And that's it. All right. Awesome. Yes. Well, thank you. Thank you. All right, bye, everyone. Bye, everybody.